Hello and welcome to Talking Wealth. I'm Dale Gillam, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within. Today we've got a great topic for you. It's about mood and the market cycles. And uh, we'll actually be talking to you about why the length of women's dresses can tell you what the market is all about and what the psychology on the market is all about. Also music and a few other things. But before we get into all of that, I need to introduce my co-host, Janine Cox. How are you? Great, thanks. How are you today? I'm saying, oh, look, I'm fantastic. I think, you know, it's exciting things on the market, but I'm actually excited about what we're going to talk about Mm. because we actually did this presentation probably about nine years ago. Gosh, that was fun. I still remember this one Mm -hmm. when you were bringing up the slide um, before I was just looking at that and thinking, oh, my goodness, I can just remember standing out in front of everybody and we just had so much fun that night. Well, it was a real fun and there's a lot of, um, how do I say it, Really, really good information about how to recognise mm. what's going on in the marketplace. Because all the talk when we look at this, the top level stuff, you know, like dividend yields, EPSs, P yeah. ratios, or we might look at a chart, but this is a really- Coming at it from a different angle. Completely different angle. And um, this was a presentation we did um, on our, what we used to do, our regular art of trading workshop. So this was on a Friday night where we invited- not just our students mm. here, but other people. And we haven't been doing those for a couple of years, those art of trading workshops. Mm-hmm. But it was a presentation on that. And um, so I haven't really changed the slides. Okay. I've got an update on one of them that I can flick to, um, which was about the history of the Australian stock market in the share prices. But pretty much mm. I haven't changed them. And you might go, well, why didn't you update them, Dale? And the answer is, I didn't need to. <laughs> They're just as relevant today as what they were nine years ago. I thought, oh, look, I'll do some new Optimus slides. Because the same things repeat over and over again. They do, because, you know, this is using Optima 6, you know, mm. uh, or Market Analyst 6 at the time, and now we're on Optima, which is like nine mm. or ten. Um, but the chart still says exactly what it should be saying and, and gives us the information that we need. So I think this is one of those misconceptions that people see when they look at a recording, they go, oh, yeah, your charts are 10 years old. Or, you know, or they look at my book, How to Beat the Managed Funds by 20%, you know, which mm. you can still get for free just by going to our website and uh, you just got to pay the shipping. And, you know, that was 10 years ago the last time that was updated and people go, oh, it's out of date. Now, no, it's not. It's still just as relevant to today. Some of the best facts and amazing techniques come from decades ago. Oh, yeah. It's like reading. The, to me, it's, you know, we read books all the time on investing or trading or whatever else and some of the best books mm. and stuff that I've read are from the 50s and the 40s. Yeah. That it's just as relevant today. But, you know, we digress and I, I really do need to take people so into. mood. Yeah, well, into. I was going to say to you, do you know what yeah. mood I'm in today? Hopefully it's a good one. I know you're wearing a, pur- you're wearing though, a purple you top to and that means your heart oh, in it's, colour it's, therapy, it's, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm just guessing, yeah, <laughs> heart is, like red is Colourful. fiery and anger. Yep. Um, but, you know, but you weren't angry last time you wore a red top in here. Yeah, um, uh, it's actually the, the highest level in the in the chakras, the purple. Purple. All right, so mm-hmm. you're you're going to be operating from your highest level today and give That's everybody right. the best of you. See, therefore, you're in a great mood. Yep. Yes. Okay, mood is a four-letter <laughs> word, though, and it can be changeable. <laughs> cool. But we want to get into the first thing, and the first thing we want to talk about is the myth. Mm. Now, the myth is that most people believe that stock market movement is caused by fundamental, economic, and political conditions and events. Well, wow. oh, you not got nothing to say about that. Plenty. About I mean, there are so many, you. so many things that we could talk about here. Yeah. That some of them we probably can't talk about here without being <laughs> considered lunatics. <laughs> so you know, maybe maybe we don't go down that path. I mean, occasionally I've gone into those types of areas with people and they just look at you as if to say, what planet are you from? Mm. Which is a bit of a clue in itself. But, you know, when we're talking about what's going on from a fundamental and economic point of view, initially people look at it and think two-dimensionally that that's mm. a cause and effect, direct cause and effect, which at times there can be in the shortest term sense, mm. but the bigger picture influences are uh, are something much greater again. Well, it is. I mean, it's logical to go, well, yeah, the fundamentals drive the stock market. Mm. Economic conditions right now, we've got higher um, inflation rates, in- interest rates are going up, those sorts of things are happening. But there, there's stuff that happens time mm. and time and time and time and time again over hundreds of years. You know, political... But we do go into new ages though. Well, we do. Over time. We do. But that's what we're saying. This is the myth is most people believe that the stock market movement is caused by these Mm. fundamental economic and political conditions. But is that what causes the stock market Mm. to move or is the stock market moving 
a reflection of our mood and then these events happen. Mm -hmm. So is it the chicken or the egg? And uh-huh. that's the question. That's mm-hmm. what I'm proposing. Is it is the is the chicken or the egg here? And we're talking about well, what actually moves the market. So what causes economic events? That's what causes thing. economic events? What causes fundamentals to change? Mm. What causes political conditions to change? What cause events to change? Mm-hmm. So is it where a reflection or the stock market is a reflection of of the market of the economics? Yeah. Or is the economics eventually reflects the market mood? Mm-hmm. That's what we're going to talk about. Now, I want to read a statement from a gentleman called Robert Prechter, and he um, did a study. Now, Robert Prechter, he's um, one of the proponents of Elliott Wave principles, so as some of our students would be aware of Elliott Wave. Now, this is from a book. I remember back in uh, – this is a book I got back in 2003, um, yep. and it's called Pioneering Studies in Socioeconomics. Well, it's actually not a book. It's a two-book series, mm. big books, and they're boring as – old Jack. <laughs> they really are boring because they're very academic books, mm. but it talks about socioeconomics or the ec- economies or economics of the social mood of the marketplace. Mm-hmm. But if you're really into investing and trading, um, probably good books to read, but expect to fall asleep while you're reading them. Uh, and I'm not saying it's a bad book. They're great books, mm. but it's just It's a very good heavy place reads, to heavy sort reads. of get an idea about the overall impression of things, yeah. especially if you read in the first couple of pages. <laughs> no, but we're going to quote, we're going to bring up some of the stuff that's mm. in within that book, but I want to quite do this quote from Robert Prechter from the book. Um, and the book was launched in 2003 and he goes, Robert yeah. Prechter says, both a study of the stock market and a study of trends in popular attitudes support the conclusion that the movement of aggregated stock prices is a direct recording of mood and mood change within the investment community and by extension within the society at large. People could say, okay, mm-hmm. we, well, interest yeah. rates have been going up, therefore it's going to affect the mood. <laughs> Correct. Mm. But is that affecting the stock market? Look, and I why think, are interest rates going up? Well, that's right. So it's actually what's happened before. For that is the influ- driving influence interest, of that. Interest rates only go up because the economy is, is going too fast. Why is the economy going too fast? Yeah, we're getting back and back and back, aren't we? We keep asking questions. And correct. What well, comes first, an the chicken or the egg? Mm. So pr- we're getting price rises. What causes price rises? So there's always a cause and effect. Mm-hmm. Interest rates are going up because the government says we're spending too much money. Yep. So why are we spending too much money? Mm. What caused the roaring 20s? What caused, what caused the 60s? And, what know? caused the whole rate? What caused mm. the 70s when we had a recessionary environment, the oil crisis? There's this list of things that go on and on and on. Mm. So that's what we're talking about now and why is it – but I want to ask you a question. Why is it important to understand the move, mood of the market today? Because I think if you understand the mood of the market, then you you can make a decision whether to try to swim against – the current or to go with it. That's yep. a simple thing. And if you know how the mood of the market is and what that means in terms of the stocks and investments that you're likely to put your money in, then you're more likely to sort of be, be prepared to not um, to go with the flow when it's going mm-hmm. and to pull back from that when um, you need to. So it's it's just having that huge awareness of what's going on that's so important. Okay, next question I've got for you now that recently... And your self-awareness, of course, let's say, because you don't want to get pulled into the current. Well, that's true. A lot of people aren't self-aware, are they? But we yeah, without about controlling that. it. You want to be, you want to be um, self-driving and self, I guess, correcting hmm. in terms of what you're doing and the decisions you're making rather than... It's all about the herd mentality, isn't it? Well, it is. I know, I know there's, you know, the it's fact that awareness brings change. If you're mm. aware of something, you can bring change. Um, and so therefore, if things aren't working for you, then what is it in you that's not working mm. that is keeping you where that is, uh, where you are by having, getting an awareness of what you're doing that's causing yep. that what the outcome that you're getting, then you can choose to keep it or change it. Mm-hmm. And most people would choose to change it if it's a negative outcome. But I also want to say, okay, so understanding the mood of the market now, is it more important to understand the mood of the market now or where the mood's going to be moving to? Well, I think both, but it's more about where the mood is moving to for, to make sure that you can set your sails and adjust mm. yourself in your direction. But it's also now because you want to be in the moment right now to be able to make the best possible decisions that you can and mm. separate yourself and almost r- rise above what's going on. So if, you know, the mood of the market, the mood of the media is about negative and doom and gloom, then you cannot get sucked into that emotional vacuum and be able to 
be, um, I Make guess, more rational. Decisions. Rational, yeah. yeah. Mm. Now, the other week in our podcast, a little recently in, a, in sorry, in our live stock market show that we do on TalkingWealth.com. So if you haven't seen that, head over to TalkingWealth.com. Oh, you're telling me to go and have no, a look? You, no, you. You're already on it. <laughs> you're one of the superstars of it. You actually Thank made you. A, did a quote by, I think it, 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 we call him the founder of modern economics, mm. um, Keynes. Um, and you John said, Maynard Keynes. John Maynard Keynes. And you talked about anticipating the, the anticipation. Yes. So do you remember the actual quote? Not off the top of my head, but you said it. It was only very short and that's really what it was. So like. basically you, you need to anticipate what the mood in the market mm. is. That's where I take it. So and to my point of view, if you understand where the mood is now, you may be able to understand where the mood is shifting. And we're going to give people mm. some of that in anyway during this whole um, podcast that we're doing. We're going to show. So if you are listening to this podcast as an audio on iTunes or whatever you listen to, we are doing a PowerPoint presentation as we're doing this. So there's some of the charts and some of the information we brought up would be great for you to go and look at that on YouTube. So we're doing, so if you go to uh, YouTube and you type in Wealth Within TV, you'll be able to bring up Wealth Within TV and you'll be able to see the graphics that we're talking about um, so that you can help you understand where the mood is now and where the mood is likely to go to. Because later on, we're going to ask you to think about where you think the mood is right now. So let's move on. So we talked a little bit about what Robert Practice said now. Mm. There's another statement. This one's by a gentleman, Paul, I've got to put my glasses on for this one. His name is Peter Atwater and, um, and he talks about moods and markets. And he said the S&P 500, which he's referring mm. to the US market, the S&P 500 is to social mood what the thermometer is to temperature. Wow. So what do you get from that one? It's just telling us what's going on. Mm. Mm. Absolutely, because if the S and P five hundred is the social mood, is to social mood what the t thermometer is to temperature. What he's saying is our mood measures mm. what's happening with the S and P five hundred. Look, this is going to do a lot of people's heads in. You realise that, don't you? I hope so. <laughs> yeah. That's my intention. If their heads are done in, that means they're curious, <laughs> yeah. and that means mm. we've actually pushed them because through discomfort yeah. comes growth. Yes, and if we keep telling people what they've always known. They're not learning. That's true. And our job is to push people a little bit past what they may think or maybe get them to challenge mm. some of their beliefs or their thinking about how the market is working or what actually happens. Okay. So and the they scenario, may or may not believe us, but yeah. test it. That's so the scenario them. then, okay, mm. if the S&P 500 is rocketing up, yep. social mood yep. is? That's, that's, that's already gone to the Mars. It's yeah. already gone because the S&P 500 is – the thermometer of mm. what the social media is already doing. So if mm. we're really excited and we're, you know, we're bullish on what we think the future's like and we're happy, we're building houses, we're doing all sorts of stuff, we're going to drag mm. the S&P 500 along with us. That's right. In Australia or the US or whatever country that you happen to be listening at the moment is is that people drive the market, not the other way. And that's really what we're talking about in terms of the chicken yeah. egg. So if we, if we create a scenario, let's just say, where somebody puts out a virus. Mm. Okay. And then it creates massive waves. Like COVID. Through people. I'm not saying COVID. Like COVID. Um, and then, <laughs> well, I've said it. And then, then prior to that, governments around the world were pumping money into the economy like they could, there was no tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then they turn around and pump more money into yeah. the economy. And then they overheat economies of the world. They do. Because we're now – people have more money in their pockets because interest rates were so low. You've got – this huge melting pot or almost like, you know, an incredible vacuum, if you like, for things to change mm. suddenly. And then we're seeing now that the mood is changing because basically the stock markets are volatile but down yep. and sideways. Yep, yep. Mm. And at some point that's got to change. So, okay, let's just say, for example, that the mood is being influenced by something. Yep. The social mood. And then as the mood starts changing, we start to see that in the share price. Now, you and I know yeah. that we can see a change really yeah. early on because technical mm -hmm. analysis starts to show us that before it even appears in the media that, that people ought to be looking at stocks because the theory is that the market's already run hard before the media mm -hmm. starts saying that this, you know, telling people all the stories start popping out saying it's now the times to buy. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so if the if the thermometer is the thing that's more accurate, because if you think about a thermometer, it's pretty quick, isn't it, and telling yeah. you that there's a temperature change. Same with the chart. Yeah, same with the chart. But, of course, there could be fluctuations in temperature that then see the temperature go the other way, just as we see with the well, stock market. Well, we can. 
So it's about looking for when the temperature becomes more reliable. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to show you how to measure that. So we're going to show you mm. certain things through this presentation that you can use to actually measure the mood of the marker, which is the, whatever the temperature is on the thermometer. Is it getting hot mm. or is it cold? Are we expanding or contracting in the economy? Yep. So let's keep moving on. So obviously we talked about, you know, the S&P 500 is to social mood, what are, you know, thermostat thermometer. is or thermometer is to <laughs> temperature, mm. whatever it is. But there's another market myth we want to talk about or another myth that we talk about. Markets often rise and fall on news, mm -hmm. okay? Investors often mistakenly watch for news to make investment decisions. The reality is that these moves are generally short term because we yeah. obviously see a lot of people, they watch the news and, you know, if, you know, what do you mm. call it? Donald Trump said something, the market would react. Mm. But is that really what drives the market or not? No. I mean, like you said, it's a short term move. Mm. But the interesting thing that you can, you as the investor can gauge from that yeah. is that how long does the market actually stumble over that? Does it recover really quickly? Because that's really telling a tale because if the, there is going to be a change in the direction of the market, mm -hmm. if those sorts of, if things keep coming up to try to trip people, if you like, and over time that doesn't trip and the market still keeps going north instead of south, then you know that we're going into more, much more of a bull market. Well, I liken it to the QE2, right? Mm. The big, big, big ocean liner. Like, you know, you might have some big waves come along for half an hour that slow the thing down, but if it's going from A to B, it's not. It's going to keep going from A to B. <laughs> That's right. It's and going to take to turn, a lot to slow it down. Turn that thing around. Is, it takes miles or con multiple kilometres to turn that thing around in a semicircle. And that's a really good point mm. because, and that's often what happens near tops is you get those big jagged mm. moves mm. in the share price. So you don't always, you often get a warning prior right. to the top or just mm. after the top that this is coming, which we saw that around the time of the GFC. Mm. There was a big fall in the stock market beforehand yeah. and then it took off again, making everybody think that it was going to go higher again. And, and then eventually it fell away and, and it wasn't until most people didn't even realise that the market was going to keep falling until after it had done the kick back up and was on its well and truly on its way down. But, I mean, because we're technical analysts, we recognise that yep. there was a high probability that the market was going to come up mm. and then it was just going to plummet, plummet which again. it did. And it did. Mm. So this is the sort of stuff we're talking about is these signposts or things that are happening in the, in the not the marketplace, within the mood of the population. And how do we, how do we explain around COVID around, around this though? That's the interesting thing for me is because with COVID it was very different. The charts, even in the 87 crash, you, you had that exuberance going into the you peak. Did. But then you still had a correction near the top. There was some um, volatility near the top. There were signs from mm. a technical point of view that the market could fall maybe not as far as what it did, but still that it was likely to move down further. Whereas with COVID, it was just literally like a sinker. You just dropped it straight into the ocean. So. Yeah, I understand that. But then what you're looking at with COVID, it was an event-driven crash. Mm. What I mean is like, let's say you are in a, a motor vehicle. You could argue that the 87 crash was the same sort of thing. You no, know, not really. It wasn't really an event-driven crash. GFC wasn't an event-driven crash. It was a systemic type of thing. Mm. It was an economic thing that happened to there. But that's what came out yeah. eventually, but not initially mm. is what I'm saying. So but the GFC initially, didn't start overnight. It just no, the like, GFC mm, didn't, but no. the 87 crash wasn't, there wasn't that build-up, whereas with the GFC there was the You were the too young to remember that. I'm just looking at the charts. I realised that. You were, you were just starting high school when that look, happened. I just look at the chart and I mm. see. I was in long pants at the time. There was a big correct, you don't even know. I don't think you know the time, the dates. <laughs> um, so if you look at the correction that happened prior to the GFC, right, there was all of that rumbling. I think it was the CEO, I think it was of NAB um, at the time. There was which, lots of rumbling. Who came out though and there were no other banks coming out and actually mm. talking about this. I just remember them mm. being the first ones to come out. So there was that real rip south in the market, so yeah. a lot of selling off. And that was when the people in the know were sort and of thinking rebounded. this could be the big one. Yeah. It rebounded. People Went to thinking all, it's cheap. Went to a new all-time high. New all-time high. Now, if you go back to the 87 crash, mm -hmm. we didn't have that big um, sell-off right prior to the peak, which when you look at a lot of stocks and some of the um, podcasts that we But neither did in 29. It was it went up and then it just started tanking. 
but the big day was part of the way down the move. But we've also alluded to in some of our recordings that, mm. that technology has played a big part since around Correct. that time of 87. Mm. The COVID is, is something, fear drives things far faster and, uh, and far deeper mm. than what greed does. Yeah, so that's so, affected the mood, hasn't so it? So COVID having a virus come out and saying we're all going to be shut down into lockdowns mm. and blah, 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 and people are dying and et cetera, et cetera. So it goes, oh, my God, we can't, mm. we're going to be locked down for a while. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. That causes huge fear and that emotion. Yeah. That emotion then caused the stock market to crash. Mm. Not the other way around. The stock market didn't crash and then our emotions changed. It was yeah, it yeah. was the emotions went. Oh True. my god! What's going to happen? All mm. you know, businesses are shutting down. They have to because no, everybody's going to spread mm. this disease faster than you know. Um, and I wonder, like, if you think about the time that the market is fe- fearful. Mm. The mood of the market is fearful after, say, a GFC. Yeah, it lasts a long time. It can, and then it slowly will change. Yeah, and because that fear is Mm. still there for the few years, but then eventually people forget. Mm. So after a COVID correction, I wonder how long that fear lasts for. Because what happened? It just bounced back up so strongly. At least lasted a couple of years, didn't it? Well, did it? But that bounce wasn't. That was people. I don't think it did. But that bounce happened because people who didn't have jobs, they were stuck at home because Mm. they wasn't allowed to go to work. They were made. They were on. They weren't getting get paid because they were in. um, I've forgotten the word, but the boss said, Mm. "Well, I don't know if you've got to. You know, you just go there, and I can't pay you. Mm. So you go home, and they didn't know when they were going to get income. So therefore, there was a whole need that people go. I'm at home. I can't go out. So what can I do to make money? <gasps> Stock market. Mm. And then you had all this advertising around all those apps True. like your Robin Hoods and stuff like that. People are going, oh, I can make $300 a day. So you got these younger generation just go boom straight onto the, onto the market. But it was a different sort of mood altogether it was. than the GFC. Yeah. So completely different mood. So, I mean, we can discuss that, you know, all day long, can't we? But anyway, to me, the, the critical thing is the prevailing trend largely depends on the mood or what we like to say, the confidence of the masses at the time. If the masses are confident the market is going to or the the outlook is bright mm. and sunny and everybody's going to be happy and everybody's got jobs and their employment's going to keep going and their wages are going to go, they'll spend more money and drive the economy. But if they're fearful of stuff... But you see, that sort of flies the in the face of what you just said because mm. people were fearful at the time. A lot of people were. Mm, but they were fearful of catching COVID. Yeah, but that was over... That was actually over the top of the mm-hmm. fear that you were mentioning before about were those businesses, because there were a lot of businesses that had to shut the door. Correct, for a period of time, and nobody right. knew how long that was going to be. And yet mm. we had all that spending after. Correct, mm. which all ended up in the stock market. So the government's mm. putting out all the spending into the stock market. So anyway, the prevailing trend really largely depends on the, the, on the mood or the confidence of the masses because markets all bounced, didn't mm. they? You know, because obviously all that spending came out and the government says this and, and there's a lot of uncertainty because we didn't know how long we're going to be on lockdown and we didn't really know how bad COVID was going to be. Now, as it turned out, it doesn't matter whether, you know, you were pro this or, or anti this, we're all lied to. So it's like, okay, the mood is so strong, mm-hmm. right? Let's just think about this scenario when the rebound happened from COVID. The mood is still so strong. Yeah, it was. Right? So. The big powers that be are thinking, okay, we've got to pull this back. So they start rising interest rates. Right, so there's interest rates, bang, let's hit them really hard because of the strength of that rebound Mm. indicated um, the strength of that. So that indicated the measures that had to come in afterwards. Inflation was a a, a direct outcome of all of that spending. Or government spending. But not just just those people spending. You're right. It was all the pent-up spending Mm. from before. From before. And the money, because we were locked down, we weren't spending as much. And so when we get out, we spend a lot. Yeah, so what what an interesting strategy that was. Huge interesting strategy. So where does that take the mood now? (laughs) Well, we're going to tell you. But golden rule of investing is always invest with a trend. Mm. Trend is my friend, you know, trade with the trend, all of that sort of stuff. So Mm. always go with the trend. So how do you determine what the trend is? Right. So forgetting what people think it is, have a look at this. (laughs) Yeah. So now we've got, we've put it, if you, as I said, if you listen to a podcast. You've got an advantage, if you've got an advantage, if you can see this. You've got an advantage if you see it. So if you are listening to the podcast, you need to get onto YouTube, go to Wealth Within TV and see what we're talking about now. Because I've done, I've graphically or put a table together of the stuff from the book that I mentioned Mm. from Robert Prechter, um, or I've recreated it from the stuff in Robert Prechter and he talks and there's, 
there's um, five columns. One is area of culture. And so those were he's got in there, campus trends. Don't read them all though. Just pick no, a No, I'm not going to pick a couple, you know, family life, fashion, fitness, um, movies, okay. blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that was the first column. Second column is is what he calls a rising transition. Now, rising transition is a is coming out of a low. Mm. That's what we're seeing. Anything coming out of the market's coming out of a low. Then we've got the next one is peak positive move. What, when, what kind of period is that in the market? Market peak. Yeah, so it's, the, it's rising up into the peak. You've got that bullish, bullish bush market. Then we've got the next column. column Bodybuilding peaks, is it? Like in fitness, it's bodybuilding. I thought you sm- meant pecs. I'm just looking there. Is pecs it peaks? When you bodybuild. Smoking junk food. Let's just stay focused here, okay? What is that? We're, we're still <laughs> explaining the columns. <laughs> the fourth column is falling transition, which is the fall from a peak. Um, and then we have the last column we call peak negative moves. And what he's done is in all these different areas of culture that some, you know, I've only mentioned a couple, like, you know, you've got politics, pop art, mm. you know, poetry, those sorts of things. So he's saying what's going on in these different types of moods in the marketplace and mm. why is this important, Janine? Well, it's just to recognise the trends and things that are going on. So mm. it's signs. It's signs for you, warning signs. It gives you warning signs. So let's yeah. give you an example. So the first one is let's we pick the area of culture called dance. Yeah. Okay. So in that culture, when we're in a rising transition, what Robert Prechter's research has done has said partners dance together, the tempo speeds up, and part then and partners separate. Mm-hmm. So that happens during the rising transition. So you can read the next one. So this is peak positive mood. What happens? Partners there? dance apart, and there's a fast tempo. So it, the different da- the style way people, of dance. This, mm. So you go think about the Roaring Twenties. What mm. kind of dancing was happening during the Roaring Twenties, and then what type of dancing was happening in the 30s or 40s? Mm-hmm. You know, in the 30s we had a recessionary or you know depressionary environment. So after the 29 cr- crash mm. or the Great Depression, what was happening then? But then we had the 50s, rock and roll came out in the 60s. And then mm. what happened in the 80s, and nobody knows what happened in the 80s anyway, and the 70s they were all stoned um, <laughs> pretty much. But So that was a, so peak positive mood is partners. In the apart. 80s you had happy pants or something. Yeah, happy pants, yeah. So in the 70s you had, was it? Seven, 80s you had some burnt orange and, and rap, mission brown. When did rap come in? Rap was in the 80s, mm. I think, something like that, or in the 90s, early 90s. In the falling transition, it's got partners come back together, tempo slowed down. A bit more cuddle time. So why is that? Because the market's falling away. Oh, that's a good question, isn't it? Well, I'm asking you. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's you have a, a good answer. Thing. You don't have a good answer, okay. <laughs> well, I just think it's, you know, when people are more... Subdued. Can I say subdued in their mood, maybe upset, maybe depressed because they've lost money... You know, they eat, you know, they do, um, how do I say, self-deprecating things like so smoking, they wouldn't be alcohol. Dancing. Well, they'd be, they'd be coming Sitting back on the together. Couch. They'd be relying on each other. They'd be <laughs> cuddling up and tempo slow down and they'd be looking for love. Okay. Because they're not getting it out of the stock market. Right. And the peak negative mood is the partners are together. So right. that's So that's dance. But again, as I said, mm. if you're listening to this on a podcast, just get onto YouTube and watch this because you'll be able to read all of I know. This. Some people are going to be thinking, what train are you on? What train? What am I going to say? What, what are you smoking? What the hell is that? Let's smoking? go for the next one. So the next one is good versus evil. I like this one. It's pretty cool. Good versus evil. So rising transition. You can just read this one. Bad guys versus good guys movies. Pro wrestling heroes celebrated. So remember, you know, you know, wrestling programs and things like that. They then, peaked at some stage, didn't they? Peaked they peaked at some stage. And when did MMA come out? Yeah. You know, those sorts of stuff. Bit of so it's interesting having a look at some of that sort of stuff. In the peak positive mood, everyone's a good guy. Yeah. Nobody's a bad guy. Falling transition, you can say that one. There are no bad guys and no good guys. Heroes trashed. Now, the mm. interesting thing is that the, the, there's a movie out called Shazam, which you haven't Shazam. seen and probably won't. No, it's... Um, but it's a DC film it's and DC it's film. actually got... It's really light-hearted compared to DC, which is generally is dark. dark. yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's fitting with what you're saying. So we're, we're here mm. saying that we're in a boom, but every, everybody else thinks that there's we're not in a boom mm. and yet we're seeing those movies coming out. Yep. And we'll give people examples shortly on the, actually on the charts. I will actually show you movies and music and everything that came out at certain times and what when they came out and what the market was actually mm. doing. So the peak negative no, mood, this is, we're still on good So we're evil. actually measuring the, the the peak mood, peak all the different moods of the movie makers really. Of the movie makers because are movies are a reflection of how of we're thinking at the time. what's going on. Because movie makers want to make movies that people will watch mm. 
they make money pretty quickly to recoup their costs. So they're making movies that fit the mood of the market at the time. Or so, are they? Why? Same with music, because they want to sell it. <laughs> who's the chicken okay. who's the egg? Who's the egg? So in the peak negative mood, everybody's a bad guy. Okay, mm. don't like being bad guys. So now we're going to go to stock market. That's when they turned Batman really, really dark, didn't they? They did. A few years <laughs> back, they turned him really, really dark. Stock market, popular valuation of productive enterprise in the rising transition. So the market is rising. Um then in the peak positive mood, it's actually topping, mm. which is the topping part of the marketplace. In a falling transition, that's when it's peaked off the top and it's coming down and it's correcting. So we know the first place is it's actually correcting. In a peak negative mood, that's when it's bottoming. Mm. So that's what, to give you an example. So when we talked about everybody's a bad guy, that's the bottom. That's mm. when you know that there's a bottom if everybody's a bad guy. So that's that will show you how to, when you're looking at movies or music or in the media and whatever's going on around there, you'll actually be able to say, okay, it's topping or it's Yeah, bottoming. so in the news they don't have any good news stories. It's all bad. Yeah, we should have a good <laughs> news story anyway. And there's a lot of different topics on mm. there. You know, we're going through to pop music. As I said, um, we're talking about philosophy, religion. We're talking about politicians and sport as well and even war. When do wars happen? Mm. So we talk about that as well. So let's move on. Now this next chart I'm showing you, anybody wow. can get this for free off the Australian Stock Exchange. And this is an older one. This was the original one we did in the presentation which finished – about nine or ten years ago. Yep. And it's Australian share price movements. And if you Google that, you go and put into Google Australian share price movements, mm -hmm. the latest one will come up on the ASX website. But what it does is it actually shows it's a you log chart. this one goes right back like a hundred years nearly. Mm -hmm. And it'll actually show you different wars and different presidents or prime ministers whose Labor and Liberal was in. Mm -hmm. um, it'll tell you different things that might have happened during the history. And it equates it to what's going on in the stock market. So this is a free chart. Again, it's called Australian Share Price Movements on the ASX. I'm going to show you that the current one um, on the AS that I got off the ASX. So this next one is the up to date current one, and it's actually which is not a log chart. It's not a log chart, and it doesn't. It only goes back to the 80s, but it shows you where the iPhone came out and when um, Microsoft did something and all different things. So it shows you a whole lot of different events. I actually don't still, like that one as much. No, I don't like it as much anyway, but it's still good for people to see. Mm. So again, just Google Australian share price movements and you'll be able to pick that up and, and have a really good look at it yourself. But let's go back to our presentation. Oh, I didn't do the right thing, did I? You got it? Yeah, you were on the right. There we no, go. There going go. back to my mm -hmm. our presentation. So now I want to go back to that very first uh, share price movement chart. Mm. Okay. And I've just zoomed up a section of it, and this section is from 1960 to 1978. Is that? Mm. Uh, well, no, 1980. 80, okay. It's up to 1980. So we see uh, when in the 60s we had a lot of growth. We had the Beatles. Yeah, some great the bands. The Beach Boys. Yeah, great music Elvis coming was out. Elvis 50s, 60s, mm. 70s. So we had that coming out. And then darker music coming and in. And then in the 70s we had Ozzy Osbourne, Black Sabbath, they fought, Black Sabbath formed in 1969. David Bowie, who the was 70s right out there. was very much a recession environment from 70 mm. to 71 to 74. Our market was falling. US market was falling. Mm. It was very much more of a recession environment. Punk 1970, rock. we had David Bowie, who was that sort of yep. um, different type mm. of thing. And then obviously punk rock came out in 76 Different to type of thing. I don't think that's a good description. Yeah. Well, he it's was, he was androgynous, I suppose. Is that yeah. a right word to say? I, I would just know. say, like, it's just out there. He's just, he was a bit out there, yeah. Ozzy Osbourne um, and Very Black Sabbath, yeah, Very as well. There. But Sex Pistols, 1976 mm. to 78, Punk Rock, Sid Vicious, blah, blah, blah. So that shows you what was happening in the mood of the market and what the market was doing. So, again, you can have a look at these um, if you do go to YouTube and see it. So now that I've flicked on to the next one now, and this is – is from, again still from 1960 to 1980. We can see there that Woodstock was 1969, and there was three days. And so you know we're talking the 60s, and then Happy Love 70s. You know early, some of those little 70s there, but that was the peak of the market. Yep. So that sort of Woodstock was saying the peak of optimism there, wasn't it? Then we've got Vietnam War. So World Recession 73 to 76. Vietnam War ends. Saddam Hussein, mm -hmm. um, Khmer Rouge, and Soweto type things happening into that. Um, President Nixon, Watergate, 1973. Yep. So what was happening? All in the, the bad the guys moment? coming out. All the bad guys coming out. So mm. looking at all that. Now, moving on again, 
we're still 60s to 80s, and this is a really good period of time to study this type of thing. In the 1960s, we saw, we saw short skirts mm. and go-go dancing there in you the go. 60s. Really happy. 60s was a really growth period. In the 70s, as you said, what did we say? Flares, long dresses and big hats. You had, you know, you had all that. I yeah. still like big hats. You still like big hats, but flares? <laughs> flares look, I don't mind flares, Did actually. flares just, ever look good? I think they look really, not in jeans, but if you've got some really beautiful pants and someone's got like a really short top, mm-hmm. uh, like just, if it's, uh, you it know, summer, good. it can look absolutely magnificent. But we saw the fashions change between the 60s mm. and 70s and then the 70s and 80s. Um, now, fashion in the 80s was bold and glitzy. Remember the 80s with all the sparkles? Oh, gosh, yeah. And the, yeah, beautiful, you know, beautiful. Staying Madonna. Alive and all that Michael sort of Michael Jackson. Stuff. Yeah, mm. yeah, Michael Jackson. And we got you know, Madonna, Michael Jackson, that sort of stuff. And then the 80s was another boomy period there. So That's right. These are things that you can look at and go, oh, okay. And music is exactly the same as movies, as other types of popular art, you know, pictures and things like that. Um, 1975, Human Rights Pact, Pact signed in Helsinki. Mm. You know, we also had, um, well, here's the thing, 1974, I went to the movies with my mum and I saw these movies, number 1974, Jeez, Towering Inferno, mm. Airport 74, 75, 76, 77, Jaws, 78, that's a good 79, one. Jaws, you know, these are all these types of new, you know, thing movies, you know, things were going on. And this is during a recessionary environment. Mm. Um, 1977. What happened then, Jane? Star Wars and E.T., oh, my goodness. I still can't quite deal with yeah. Star Wars. I didn't really know much about it yep. until much later because my husband was a big fan of it. Yep. But um, he's picked it up somewhere along the, the has, line. Has he? From who? Probably an uncle or someone who's tried to influence him that way. I don't know. Yeah. 1983, our market started to take off and Flashdance came out in 1983 with those Awesome leg warmers. <laughs> <laughs> Lycra and leg warmers. Beautiful. Something like that. But again, as I said, these charts, as I said, you can go to YouTube and see what we're talking about here, but we need to look at what's happening in the market in mm. terms of music. So what kind of music is happening now? What kind of movies are coming out Well, that's now? a good question, mm. but I don't really know. It's funny because I'm just so busy that I don't pay attention to... I'm not asking you. I'm asking our viewers. And well, our look, do you know? The answer to that? Oh, You're yeah. asking them a question. You're supposed to know the answer yourself. Well, well, that's true. That is true. But, you know, some of the most popular music right today, I mean, obviously mm. we've had rap and all of those sorts of stuff. We had periods of death metal and those mm. sorts of things. Right now we're getting the most popular type of stuff. We've got a bit of, um, you know, Adele is probably the most popular person in the world at the moment in terms of music. But you do have other ones um, from that sort of stuff. Music, you know, movies, what are we getting in times of music movies at the moment? We're not getting a lot of super happy type of movies, are we? We're still getting peak movies that, you know, a lot of drama. So you think it's still like. the middle of the middle of that cycle? Mm, I don't think we're at that sort of peak of optimism and stuff mm. like that at, at all. I mean, obviously, you know. Obviously when, the market's showing yeah. that we're not. I know Adele when, when you know, I've, I've got her concert and she talks about she doesn't do upbeat songs. You know, most of her stuff about breakups and things mm. like that. So, and people love that sort of stuff. And she and she's a great singer, and I've done an issue with that. But um, to me, just looking at what the music is coming out, and what the it's most funny, isn't it? Because I was speaking is. to someone the other day who said she said I've stopped listening to all of that stuff, that yes. sort of stuff. Yeah, why? Because I don't want to listen to fill my head with or things maybe the that mood are is changing. Mm. That's what happens if we get a so, few more like that. Yep. So, we know how mood determines market cycles. How about we more look more closely how mood translates into market cycles? Because we're saying what we're saying is people is the mood changes, then the market changes. Yeah, the mood's the most obvious at mm. the turn before the turn, mm. where you get that big sell off at the bottom, yep. and the the exuberance or the euphoria rising into the peak. So now what we're going to do is put those onto charts. Now, as I said, we're going to talk a bit about this uh, just before I bring up some of the stock charts. This now. is the best chart. If you ever want to look at a chart about the market. Mm. This is the best chart that you will ever look at, not a stock and whether it's a buy right now. This is going to explain everything. I tell all of our students to mm. print that up into A3 and put it above their computer and yeah. look at it. Anytime they're looking at a stock or the market, mm. to look at this because I call this the roadmap to the exactly. market. Exactly, It is your GPS um, and it's called Dow's Theory of the Market and mm. you can Google this and get this anywhere. I've um, just put Dow's Theory of the Market. Mm-hmm. And you'll get this and basically has impulse and corrective phases of the market. So impulse yep. being bullish side, um, corrective phases, obviously the bearish side. And if there are three phases that you have on the bullish side, 
Do you want to go through those? Yeah, abandoned hope and phase no, two. On the left hand side, the oh, bullish phase. That's okay. the bearish phase. Oh, I thought you'd done that. No. Phase one, renewed confidence. Just two. prove you don't listen to me. I know. Look, I just had a huge lunch. You know, <laughs> I'm still thinking about That's it. Not an excuse. Phase two, improved earnings. Phase three, rampant speculation. And that's the bull side so of things. So that's the bull side. So phase one, so we really know what, phase two, improve earnings, phase yeah, three, and all, rampant speculation. Yeah, and all sorts of things that appear on the chart that you can recognise in those different phases. And that's a beautiful thing about the market. But the media tells us these mm. things, don't they? So when we hear journalists talk about, oh, there's been renewed confidence and blah, 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 mm. or they go, Oh, their stock's going and it's been speculated on. It's ramping, being well, ramped best, up. Be, yeah, well, the best time of year is the earnings um, mm. season to listen to and that. And you hear this. So the bear market phases, there's three bullish phases mm. and three bearish phases. The bearish phases are one is abandonment of hope. It's mm -hmm. phase one. Then we get number two is decreased earnings. So it, it rises less. It rises less up. Um, and then phase three but is it's funny, isn't it? Because it's almost like... The push is still trying to happen, mm -hmm. you know. The push. Yeah, but it just dies, doesn't it? But that's it? where you get the it off the top. Because generally markets don't, unlike COVID, generally yeah. markets don't generally crash, crash straight down. So that's why we, along with all the other experts in the world, expected the market to go mm. up a little bit and then come down again that's with right. the COVID. But it didn't happen. So abandonment of hope is where everybody's bought after the you know, rampant speculation. There's been some mm. selling. And they go, oh, and then all of a sudden there's people come in to bring that back a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I wonder that. given that situation, you know, why more people mm. didn't sort of stand up and point the finger and say, you know, there was massive manipulation of oh, the market yeah. and why did we allow people to walk away Correct. from that? Mm. Now, we talk about this in great depth through our diploma course and things like that. So, mm. I mean, at the end of the day, again, if anybody just looks at a stock and they go, well, where is it on well, the market or where is it in terms of this Dow's theory of the market? They can do that. And mm. I could defy an eight-year-old to do this. Yep. It's not – you don't need to be a rocket scientist or have a degree in engineering to figure this thing out. Now, again, now we're, let's put it on, on a chart. Now, this is a chart. Again, this is the same chart we used nine years ago mm. um, and it's in Market Analyst 6 and we're at like Optimus Market Analyst 10, I think, roughly. So that's how far along we've got. But we've put Dow's faces on there for people to see what it looks like on a chart. So do you want to take everybody through the chart? Yeah, Um this was really important, I think, to show people when we were going through this whole process because it wasn't just showing them, you know, the Dow's faces in the market. This is a symbol of what the or the theoretical picture of what of that, it is. Yeah. This is more, okay, yeah. this is actually what happened and applying that over the top of the mm. market. So we can see at the start there, um, we start off, well, really After you've got to draw the line in the sand, you yeah. know, so after a correction if you can draw the line in the sand there, then you, it, you know, that's the best mm. place to start. Major, and you could do that after the um, the roaring twenties, well, after could. the big correction. Then absolutely. Well, after so, the twenty nine crash yeah. with the market, the U.S. market bottomed in thirty two, mm. and I think we bottomed in thirty three or thirty one. I thirty one. I thought it was before thirty one. Mm. No, it was the before. I'm thirty one. So then we got we've got renewed conf. Our memory is not as great confidence. as what it used to be. Renewed confidence coming out of that 87 crash. So there's that sort of sideways choppiness that you expect to see Into where the market tries to take off and yep. it comes back again. Yep. And then coming up from that, we get much better trends in yep. the market. It's much easier to trade. Improved earnings are happening. We're seeing that through, what was that, 93 all the way through to about what through the, the late 90s. Yep. And then we see the the Asia crisis happen there. So we yeah, we had late, the initial late 90s, yeah. yeah an initial warning of that, which was pretty sharp uh, was. and very volatile. You could argue that it was similar with COVID because it just came straight down. Yeah, that was very short though. Yeah, it was only a few days. And then then a rebound because obviously mm. people realised that there were some huge opportunities in there. But then it wasn't it wasn't mm. really it was short lived the recovery bit like what happened after COVID and then we've seen a pullback occur from there. And then there's this period of this real choppiness that happened mm -hmm. after this improved earnings. So it's almost like the good news has come out. The mood's still trying to push the market higher, but it's really not advancing significantly. It's mm. just, it's taking off, it's coming back. But those sort of movements were really great for trading, as you can see, but, but perhaps not as great as when you first come out of these lows. And again, after the pullback that we saw in to, to 2003, yeah. then some incredible opportunities to trade the market, which mm. we will get these sort of opportunities again. People have to just be patient. Mm. And then right up 
and then we started the uh, other side of the thing. After so the, the rampant the speculation. Side. Yeah, the rampant speculation. But it's about it's about separating yourself from what's actually yeah. happening, and and the more you've mm. been doing this, the more you'll more easily this will come to you that you'll be able to recognise these this activity in the market and step back from it. Well, we've done a lot of recordings on that part of that rampant speculation mm. where we've said to people you know, when. There were record levels of margin lending, record mm. levels oh, that, of people. Our Tuesday night into show as well. We've there done were that. record levels mm. of people going into managed funds. There were record levels of people borrowing money off their housing and putting it into the stock yeah. market. So when you're seeing that, that is rampant speculation, mm. and that's the big signpost that the top is coming soon. Yeah, not necessarily he has hit, but mm-hmm. then the opposite happens. We once the GFC peak happened, we started the fall. We got that initial fall, which is your abandon of hope. Then you got a rebound of that. Mm. Uh, that you did mention before. Then we got the, the announcements started coming out, you know, decreased earnings, you know, that sort of stuff. And then eventually distressed selling. Then we got record levels of people having margin calls mm. and, you know, going bankrupt, all that sort of yeah. stuff happening. So a lot of signposts. But, you know, then we go back into a new confidence, which, as you said earlier, yeah. is people slowly change their mood mm. over a period of time, which, you know, then it will start to get into from bad news about companies having bad reports, bad, you know, um, losing money, bad profit reports, all that sort of stuff, mm. eventually that stops happening. And when that stops happening, that's the changing in the mood then. And then the mood starts to pick up from there. But it's a really great chart. As I said, it doesn't need updating. It tells you everything that yep, you need to know exactly. on that sort of stuff. So let's move on. We've got that's another chart here. Yeah. This again, this is the All Ordinance Index and mm. this is from… Um, 87? Um, somewhere around about, it comes around from 87 right through to 2009, but we're showing how cyclical the market is and how, I won't go into explaining this, but it shows you how regular the market is between mm. low to high to low to high to low to low. So you get to get onto YouTube and have a good look at this so you can see that our market is very predictable mm. if you understand what you're doing and so have got some good information on it. But let's keep moving on. I won't explain that too much, but what we see is, and what we're putting on at the moment on that chart is sort of things that happen. In, rela- in relation to the mood of that market that might cause the cyclical nature mm-hmm. or that repeatability of our marketplace. So all the things we talked about earlier was, you know, the dresses and music and movies. Now, out of the 87 crash, we had a, move, a nice strong move up out of 87 into 88 into 89. But then what happened? You're just looking at it. You don't no, know. I'm just... Um, oh, you're going to read it? I'm just waiting for you to keep going. Oh, why? Do I have to do all the work myself? On this one, yep. <laughs> cool. Well, then what happened is we before in sort of 89, 88, 89, then we had the pyramid, big pyramid collapse in Geelong, which caused Geelong to shut down. Uh, Bond Corp collapses. So uh, that was Alan Bond and that sort of stuff, the big Bond Corp. You know, we had, I think, I think it's like Ariadne and um, Poseidon and all that sort of stuff. I think that might have been around there. It might have been before that. I can't remember. Uh, but the Gulf War started. Um, and when we had Paul Keating telling us we had the recession we had to have, mm. wasn't that exciting? So if we move on from that, then we see 19, roughly 1994-ish, ex- roughly, then we've had um, tax cuts in the USA, the European community, uh, the currency turmoil, the gold price was up, the Australian government had a lot of asset sales, and that was another peak of the marketplace. Then we move on to the next sort of peak, sort of 1997-ish, um, which is what you mentioned, the Asian crisis or the Asian currency crisis. We had Australian agricultural commodity prices. They dropped out of bed. That was a short, but that was another market peak. Um, and then we move on to uh, April 2000, which we talked a bit about, uh, and we've talked about numerous times, is the tech wreck. In mm. April 2000, we had uh, this speculative boom in tech stocks and then the tech wreck. But we also had 2001, we had the 9-11 tra- crash, we had, um, HIH insurance crash, we had the Bali bombing, and then the second Iraqi war happened and there was another peak of our marketplace there. So it was interesting about these economic things that happened. And then obviously the GFC subprime crisis happened you know, in 2007. So we've, we've actually put these things on top of a chart of the All News Index just to show you what was going on in our economy at the time of all these peaks. So being aware means you can make decisions, don't you? So... Let's mm-hmm. move on. Mm-hmm. So This is interesting. Well, it is. So, I mean, right now we've got to talk about what – I want to ask you what is your view of society's mood and the economic and political conditions today. And I'm not necessarily asking you, Jenny. I'm asking the people listening mm. to say, well, what's your view of the society's mood? What is the mood of the market? What do you see from people in businesses, your friends, your family? What's the mood? What are they thinking? What's 
are they in a positive mood? In the, are they in an euphoric type of mood? Do they think things are going to, you know, or are they in a doom and gloom? I'm not going to say, say an answer because you've asked me not to necessarily. I didn't ask you well, not to. I said I was asking our viewers really. and well, our listeners. But I went into a cafe the other day okay. and it was packed. You're going to tell me anyway. I'm just going to give you a clue. <laughs> And it was really packed. Right. So there were just so many people in there. And I said, oh, how's business going at the moment? And they said, oh, flat out. And I thought, okay. Great. Mm -hmm. That's telling me a lot. It is telling you a lot. But I was, I, I think I remember saying this on one of our recordings around Christmas time. You know, I was in David Jones and Myers. We went to see the Maya window here in Melbourne and into David Jones. And I was just gobsmacked. And people, there were people around, but nobody had shopping bags. And normally at Christmas time, you see these people with, Bags and That's bags. That's because they'd and already bags. done it. Had they? Mm. But it didn't surprise me that you know retail sales were down a little bit. Mm. So, but but, is, but that shows you if you're out shopping and there's a lot of people out there shopping and they've got lots of gear, you know, lots of bags and everything. That means people are spending. But if it's not there, then they're not spending. And why aren't they spending? Mm -hmm. Are they fearful? And we're seeing a lot of things talk about now about mortgage stress. Mm. You know, we had people going, but it's the well, same I'm paying 50% more for it's my mortgage now than I was before. It's the same playbook they do all the time and then it's the same thing as when we're coming into mm. election. They bring the same issues up over and over they again. Do. It's just a different face that appears on the screen it's in time. opposition. <laughs> so, Here's another one. Same, com same comments, different person. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Totally agree. Totally agree. And it's, I think we need better politicians. So what phase do we think the market's in now, Janine? I'm going to you want to, tell you to answer that one. Oh, I have to tell them. So yeah. are we in the bullish phase or the bearish phase? So no, are we in renewed confidence? No. I think that. so. We're I think we that. passed that. Are we in rampant speculation? No. We're not up to that. I don't think we've we seen are. some improved earnings along the way, but it's we just are. we're in a little bit of um a limbo at the I moment. I think we've done the the you know the, we're, I think we're in the middle phase of mm. that Dow phase of the market on that bullish size. Mm -hmm. I don't we're not at the end. Yeah. So we're not to bat to crash. We're not at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I think we're in that middle phase of Dow phases of the market. So, and we're just waiting at the moment. We're in a bit of limbo, as you said, and I think we're just waiting for a bit more better news to come out, mm. that sort of stuff. But I think the mood is changing, you know, and things will get kicking on again. So that's where I think we're at, but I could be wrong. Look, think about this for a minute. Mm. During COVID, mm. who planned holidays and when? Who planned holidays? So, so there was COVID, right? Nobody wanted to go anywhere. Mm. Come out of COVID? What were people talking about? Escaping. But how many did? Well, a lot of people did. I'm but thinking, did a lot of people I mean, go you, overseas you, though? Well, you saw a lot of people booking holidays, but I don't know whether they went overseas, but I know no, airports but, uh, were chock a Let's just use that as a measure of people's uh, mood. So when the mood is, you know, great or heightened, mm. People are spending money on all sorts of holidays going here. Well, they're going everywhere. overseas. They're doing lots of stuff, buying new cars. Yeah. And, but some of that stuff we so, couldn't do because obviously try, sometimes. No, but, but now, right, yeah. what is the mood? What is the mood in relation to those people spending money on big trips? I think it's subdued at the moment because they're not right. doing it. But when, when did people plan to spend that money? Okay. Is that a trick question? Think about it. You yourself I need, said. I need Joe and Mary. I've been I at the asked dinner table. You, the same. I asked going. you last year. I said, when are you going away? And you said, oh, maybe 2023, but more than likely 2024. Well, I I was supposed to go away 2020, 2021, 2022 overseas. That's but right. obviously 2020, all my plans that we'd bought got cancelled. Mm -hmm. um, so we got our refunds and whatever else. And then 2021, I was going to the US. That didn't happen because we kept getting locked down. Mm -hmm. We had more lockdowns than the jail. I'm here in Melbourne and then 2022, we had less lockdowns, but still more lockdowns. So it wasn't until sort of mid last year or sort of August-ish, no, September last year. forget about that. It's just like, well, now I'm thinking so about holidays happening? again. That's I'm right. just saying I'm ready to so think about I'm holidays. So what I'm saying is people are starting to think about more holidays overseas now, I'm right? I'm desperate to go on a big holiday. So once it, once that starts to really kick in again, we've seen airports absolutely chock-a-block at Christmas time. But there's still some pretty good deals with some travel deals. And now we're seeing that, yeah, apparently they're a good deal. They, they'll mm. they'll do anything to get people to part with their money. So what you're saying is people travelled domestically the last year or so. I'm saying that, yep, we've seen that. And this could be mm. sort of like after the wake, if you like. Mm. And then if there were so many people that I remember hearing, even on TV shows, news and stuff, mm. they were talking about that they're planning holidays and they're just going to let it go maybe till sort of, 
second half 2023, 2024? Mate, if somebody gives me a good deal, I'm gone tomorrow and you're, you're <laughs> left with the baby here. You're doing all the podcasts. So what I'm recordings. saying to you is that you're talking about the phase we're in now and mm-hmm. matching it up with what you're saying. It fits perfectly. It does. And, you know, I just read in the newspaper today the opening two rounds of the Australian football season mm. has had record attendances. There you go. Um, we saw Ed Sheeran here in the last month or two with mm. concerts, had record levels of people. And what sort of music Ma- is 200, that? 200,000 people at two two concerts. What sort of music is Ed Sheeran? Ed Sheeran is, it's a bit more upbeat. It's it's um, it's not jump up out of your seat sort of thing though. But well, is it? a lot of people do, but it's not, you know, it's. It, I wouldn't say it's like, you know, going to a Kiss concert, you know what I mean? But it's a great uh, it's great uplifting. Music. It's uplifting type of music. Mm-hmm. So yeah, some of his songs are, are really, really. So really that good. fits with you know what we we're had, talking about. We had Billy Joel here in in you know, December, which I went and saw, which yep. is amazing. You know, it was just a real upbeat, lifting concert. So I what, saw what music's come out for the young people? I don't Is, listen to young people. You're asking the wrong person. So, <laughs> so I turn, you know, like I listen to the young people. And I go, okay, that's interesting. But that's about it, you know. But we're not getting we're not getting all that death metal and stuff like that anymore. I don't think we're getting much of that. But we're getting. It'll still be there. But there are some really nice new artists coming out. But it's just not in the forefront. You know, like you got Pink coming out Mm. soon. You know, she's brilliant. Yeah. You know, uh, those sorts of people are coming and doing concerts again. Mm. That's and to me. That's showing the mood of the market. People are still a bit upbeat. They're not all sort right. of doom and gloom. So I think, you know, that's where okay. I think we're in that phase of the market. And I think. So we've got the best part yet to come, is what you're I saying. I think we've got the best part yet to come. <laughs> because we've just got out of this little bit of a hurdle, but I want to try and encourage people to, st- to stay positive. Mm. And this is what I was talking about a bit earlier about. Um, well, you, you don't need to tell them because it's going to happen anyway. Well, it is going to happen <laughs> anyway, but no. Nothing positive came out of a negative mind. Mm. And so we have a responsibility for ourselves to manage our own mood. And like you said, this person doesn't, you know, watch these things anymore. You know, to me, it's garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. So don't listen to negative stuff. Don't watch negative mm. stuff. We've got this music that's sort of uplifting. Yeah. We've got the, cut, the, the undertone in the media, which is saying is, a lot of doom and gloom. No, that's just lazy journalism because it, they just follow police and ambulances all the time mm. and then just report whatever's happened there. So to me, that's not necessarily great journalism, but to me it's like, would you rather having but in these times, in But in these times you can still have this negativity trying to pull people down and that's yet why this people other should stuff be on Talking Wealth. pushing com. people up. People should be listening and watching TalkingWealth.com. Like to not feed just their brains podcast. with healthy... But get onto talkingwealth.com. I mean, it's like, was it $3.50 something a week? And listen to all these amazing people. And there's people. so many mm. amazing people, positive people, people with an abundance mindset, mm. people with a success mindset, people who are motivational, inspirational, with great stories, great mm. information, great education, great um, research and facts. Mm. Because if you keep feeding yourself positive stuff and putting yourself in a mood that is an abundant mood that, you know, like I remember somebody the other week was saying to me, oh, you know, Blah, 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 you know. You know, the, everything's doom and gloom and there's not any money around the world. And I went, mate, if that's <laughs> really? what. Yeah, How? I, said, okay. I said, mate, Where there's looking? trillions of dollars running past there's my so face much every money day. On the sidelines. There is so much Well, not just that, but there's so much opportunity. Mm. And, you know, this person said, no, there's no, you know, you know, my job, I'm not getting pay rise. I said, give yourself a pay rise. And they went, How do you do that? I said, there's so many things you can do to make money mm. from home, sitting yes. on your backside. And they go, well, how do you do that? And I went, well, start thinking about mm-hmm. it. Think of possibilities. Think about what you could do because, and I remember chatting to a journalist only last week and he said, and I was talking about interest rates and the people with mortgage press and how mm. we need to change our messaging to Gen Zs because, you know, my generation is telling them it's all hard. You mm. can't buy your own house. It's, you know, you're struggling. You're going to struggle to buy a house. You're going to struggle when you've got a house. And, mm. and, He said, oh, yeah, it's it's like that, isn't it? And I said, you know, do you worry about your mortgage? And he goes, pretty much every day. And I said, I've never had one day in my whole life that I've ever worried about paying my mortgage. Yeah, same with me. And he goes, really? I said, yeah, correct. Because I always have a positive mood and I have an abundant mood and I always make sure that I'm set up that I don't put myself into those situations and so do you. But that's what the difference Mm. is between successful people and ones that aren't. 
successful people. I wonder people. if that's purely the difference between people who are willing to invest and not. Well, successful people if, learn and they continually learn. That's what we've talked about is they keep, they buy more books. They because if, you, if, you, if you're if you fearful like that, you won't invest. You don't. You've got to have and an open mind. And you regress and you, mm. you shrink because uh, mm. to me it's, you know, if, if you're not going forward, you're going backwards. Mm. There's no such thing as mm. standing still. People are walking past you. And it's your choice whether you do that, and that's about understanding your mood. And, and it's so, and making such sure small things that can be done. I mean, absolutely. I, I think I've talked before about that book that I read mm-hmm. years and years ago. I think it was in my twenties, and it was this guy that came to Australia that he um, had a loser guy came from Europe. He came, no, oh, no, no, came. <laughs> where's his head going? He he came from Europe, and he. Mm. Look at the opportunity in this country to be able to purchase property. Yep. So he very early on started squirreling money away until he could get to the point where he could borrow some and buy mm. a house. And he ended up accumulating a number of houses. And mm. when the crunch came, he wasn't really prepared for it, mm. but he knew what he could do. Like people around him were telling him that, no, that's ridiculous. You need to give it away. But he did. He just decided to take massive action and did whatever he could do to fulfill his goals. Mm. And be, he he was ended up being a multimillionaire out of it because he, he stuck to that. doesn't matter where he started. And, and but he started off very small, didn't have yeah. any money when they came. Mm. Mm. There's so many stories like that. You know, my story is, you know, starting from nothing. You mm. know, a lot of people's stories are starting from nothing. And yeah. I don't share that to get sympathy from anybody. It's just my mood has always been, I need, I, I, I had my mood as an abundant mood. It's not a scarcity mood. If mm. you think, if you always talk about money, then mm. uh, you think there's never enough. And if you keep, keep thinking there's never enough, there never will be enough for so you. So what's the mood just, is the mood mm. around that person just money or do you think that there's a, a sort of a, a, sort of a systemic thing now that there's this mood around money? I think there's a bit of both. I think there's a bit of both. There's a lot of stuff about, especially what, you know, the baby boomers are talking about, you know, to the young people, you know, about it's hard, blah, blah, blah. And if you even watch the TV, they talk about, you know, how to save money on your electricity bill on your phone. I guess they do because they've been saying, I can't imagine what it's going to be like for young people. Correct. And to me, that's disgusting. Yeah. You know, teach Mm. young people how to do things, Mm. teach people how to find Ways of making money or do better, you know. But we're not, and that's mm. the, the, yeah. They've got a lot more tools at their disposal now correct. than what they've they got. More information, yeah. more tools, and everything else. But we put we mm. our generation, and I'm not saying you or me, but I'm talking about the people of my generation, people over fifty or forty five mm. or fifty, are still dumping crap into young people, which it's based on their beliefs and their systems, yeah. and we've and they've proven that doesn't work. You know, if you have a success mindset, an abundant mindset and a mindset that says, well, it doesn't matter what challenges I face mm. because the people that succeed are the ones that have failed the most mm. and they get up and do it one more time. Yeah. And they're the ones, the, the successful people are the ones that continue to learn, continue reading books, continue learning things. And that's why I don't get why so many people who want success in the share market can't even spend two grand to do mm our trading mentor course where they get every single email answered by me. I, know. I do those recordings for people. And any one of them can make them more than the money of the, of the actual course. But people go, oh, it's expensive. Well, they're mm. the people who have the challenge with money, thinking True. there's scarcity, not abundance. That's interesting, oh. isn't it? Because when if the mood changes mm. and then the stock market is the thermometer mm. measuring the temperature and you think about those people and their mood, like, you know, everybody's going to be on slightly different wavelengths, mm. if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So if those people, because of their beliefs, are on a di- slightly different wavelength, but they must, their mood must be moving to more positive when the overall mood's moving to more positive. It does, but don't wait. That's what I'm saying. But, you what, you, control but, your but mood. what you're saying is it moves late. Those people are the late movers Correct. that move into the stock market the right near the top. The 10% like us are the people that set their own mood mm. and set their own agenda. Yeah. And that's why we're always yeah, this, more the successful. The stock market is not determining when we start is no, what you're saying. No, the stock market doesn't determine when we start. Yeah. We start when we want to start. But the majority of the masses move together and the mm. masses are generally wrong or get mm. it wrong. Um, and that's historically shown that okay. time and time again. So that's all I'm saying is is if somebody listening or watching us is saying to us or saying to themselves, sorry, or the person in the mirror in the morning who's brushing their hair or having a shave, they're going, mm. hmm, I wish I – or mm. wish I could, or, you know, I'd like to. You always can. 
Mm. If you're saying those things to yourself, I'd like more money, I want a pay rise, or I'd like that, you know, better house, mm. better car, holidays, whatever the thing is for you, or send my kids to private school, you can do that. It's just about looking at your mood right now mm. and adjusting your mood. And yep. you know, I remember years ago, of, I forget, there's a Zig Ziglar book, he said, you need a check up from the neck up. <laughs> and it's so right. Mm. You know, have, give yourself a check up from the neck up. And change yes. your mood to one of abundance and one that you can get what you want because it doesn't matter mm-hmm. what's happening in the economy. And I, over my decades and decades of being on this planet, I've never been affected by one recession or one mm. interest rate rise or anything. I've just kept going. Yep. I have, it's, yeah, they slow me down and oh, I speed up, but the thing is it doesn't stop me at all and I don't get affected by that. And as you said and, and I said, I've never worried about mm. interest on my mortgage ever. Mm-hmm. You know, I've never worried about making a mortgage payment ever and that's a nice place to be in too. That is great. You know, and I think anybody can be in that space mm-hmm. if they have the right mood and set the right processes in place. But I agree. I think we better finish up this yes, podcast let's. for everybody. But if you do, um, you know, get onto YouTube and you can watch the, the actual recording of this because you'll be able to see the charts and everything we talked about. So just go to YouTube, type in Talking Well TV and watch it. Give us a big thumbs up and a like and comment us saying, hey, great, love your, love your video, share it with your friends, we'd love to do that. If you are listening to us on a podcast, give us a five-star rating and a review on iTunes or whatever platform that you're looking at. And if you are looking at and thinking about, you know, what you can do with the share market, please head to our website, wealthwithin.com.au, click on the education tab, tab and look at our education and just talk to one of our team because they will help you understand what is best for you. And if it is, it is. And if it's not, it's not, that's okay. But have a good look at it first anyway before you make that decision. Um, or you might just like to get my books, so they're available on the website as well. But anyway, that's it for Talking Wealth. I'm Dale Gillam, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth and I'm here with Janine Cox, our Senior Analyst, and we do hope you like our podcast. But for now, goodbye, good luck, and good trading. <laughs>